this week. It doesn't matter if you're alive or dead, we're still gonna baptize you. Tonight on the Drunk Mormon Podcast. This is the podcast where we drink with the Mormon, strange and peculiar people they may be. Come hear the stories we were taught in our childhood. Come drink and join our eternal family. Come drink and join our eternal family. Welcome to the Drunk Mormon Podcast. Woo! October edition. This is our third episode in the month we are calling Oh No, October. It's my favorite month. Yeah, mine too, actually. I say this every episode. (laughs) (laughs) I just want people to know how much I love October. Um, We were doing sort of like spooky topics for this month, um, and... This episode will be no exception, but I'm David John Banks, and I was raised Mormon. I'm Lauren Sackwich. I've never been Mormon a day in my life. And we're your hosts. Each week on the podcast, we teach Lauren a little bit more about Mormonism, whether that's stories from the Book of Mormon, stories from Mormon church history, or peculiar things that Mormons believe. Um, And this week, we are continuing our Oh No October theme. Oh no! By talking about another kind of spooky topic. Oh no! Or at least spooky sounding, which is baptisms for the dead. What? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yep. No. Yep. No. <laughs> but, but first, we have some business. We have some business. I'm super excited about this business. We need to introduce our special our guest. Our special guest this episode. Join the podcast for her first time. You know her. You love her. I love her because she's my drag mother. We have Andromeda. Yay! Hi. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the show. So the reason that Anne is here is because, one, ever since I revealed to the podcast that I am starting to do drag, Mm -hmm. it was inevitable that she was going to come on. But also, she requested that we talk about this topic. Wait, you knew about this? Yes. Okay. so I said... (laughs) Um, we, we definitely are going to get to that. Why don't you come on the show when we talk about it and learn alongside Lauren? Okay. So we ask all of our friends on the podcast when they're here for the first time, they have to answer two very important questions. First, what's your relationship with Mormonism? And second, what's your relationship with alcohol? Okay. So I'm not Mormon, but I know several Mormon people. I have Mormon friends. Um, and my relationship with alcohol is a very loving one because I'm a drag queen and that's typically what the club pays you with. <laughs> oh! That's true. We got mimosas last time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. Wait, so I'm like, I'm so curious. Have you ever been to a baptism of the dead? How did you know about um, the baptisms of the dead? So I learned about it because I... Well, s- okay. I'm maybe actually, we're actually, to, I'm going to jump in because okay. I think... I think this will be, that's a great segue into the lesson, but we can't have the lesson yet because first we have to drink. Wait, I actually have another question. <laughs> <laughs> this is about drag. Oh, okay. So okay. when you say um, you're a DJ Beast drag mother. Well, my drag name is Goldie. 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 Plates. So you're Goldie Plates drag mother. Yes. Did you decide that you were going to take on Goldie? Like, did you reach out to Goldie Plates or do you reach out to Anne? Like, what's the dynamic there? Is there one particular way to do it, or, like, it's kind of... I only know how it happened for us. I don't know what's normal. Um, So it can happen in several different ways. Um, And it happened for us because we went to have lunch, and we just were kind of talking about it, and we're like... He said, like, oh, I want to do drag. I want to try it, because it's one of these things that he wants to do before he turns, you know... The, the next age yeah. I'm turning Yeah, yeah. Before, 21. Before, no, I'm 20. I'm actually turning into drink. Before he 22. Re- before he reaches gay death. <laughs> um, and so I was like, yeah, let's do it. Oh, how fun. That's dope. Which means that unlike many drag mother relationships were adoptions, mine was a birth. Yes. Okay, cool. And so she basically took me completely under her wing and guidance and taught me basically everything because I didn't know really anything. And I feel like I still don't, but 
It's okay. It's funny because I feel like now out of everybody in the room, I wear heels the least. <laughs> I like, can't wear heels. I fall over. I, I wear them sometimes in the house when I'm like cooking or whatever just to sort of practice. Yeah. But this yeah. topic for another day. Topic for another day. <laughs> right now. Right now we're talking about dead people and baptisms. And getting <laughs> fucking drunk. Please. So. <laughs> it's been a long day. I'm ready. <laughs> it happened for all of us. Yes. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to be making is um, a lover girl, which I got the name from a friend of mine, uh, Ray Latre, who's another drag queen in Los Angeles. And it's basically just um, a vodka Red Bull, but with some crayon in it. Genius. Mm, excited. Excited. Cheers. 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 Oh. I'm into it, to be honest. Yeah, I do like it. Um, I think that the, like, the crayon kind of, like, gets rid of, like, that disgusting, chemically taste of the Red Bull. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, I like that. And it's good for your uterus. This is delicious. And no drink this good should be wasted without a toast. So let's toast our latest Patreon subscriber as of me checking when we recorded this. So here's to Aria and <laughs> to drag mothers. <laughs> here's to Aria and to drag mothers. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Let's get drunk. <laughs> My friend fell asleep in like the wrong apartment once. She walked into an apartment that she thought was hers and then passed out on the bed and it wasn't the right one. Once in college, I had gone home with this guy from a frat and I was awake and he was asleep and some frat bro walked into his room and I was like oh, fully awake being like hey dude like you're in the wrong room like I was trashed and then started to get in the bed with me and my date and I my date was passed out and wouldn't like would not wake up oh my like, god wouldn't wake up. and I was like you have to be fucking kidding me the the other frat bro was like in the bed with us for like Oh. I'm gonna say a solid like minute and a half before my guy actually woke up. Oh my god. Like a gay guy, I can like cl clock him from across the uh -huh. <laughs> street. Uh -huh. sure. I feel like I'm really bad at picking it out. There are people that I'm like. There's gay face. Oh, That's gay thing. face so, is a thing, and straight people it? don't pick it out. What is it? I think it's like a gay thing, like you know, survival I thing. Um. One thing we really need to do before we get to the lesson, before I forget, is yeah. we need to make. I want oh, to make cards. some Halloween cards Halloween for cards. our. We should one do of this our, on the air. So we have two tiers of Patreon. Someone can just give us a like a dollar a month, and we're like, thank you for your dollar. We, we appreciate will use it. this well, and then. Also, if you give $3, which isn't really that much more, no. then you're what's called a pen pal, and we, like, mail little things. Oh. And so, because it's October, I, I, I suggested to Lauren that we make little Halloween cards. Oh, that's cute! So, we'll, we'll, so we'll just make some real quick. So, I have some craft supplies. Yeah. Ooh. Some construction paper. I'm gonna colors. apologize in advance to whoever gets my cards, which are gonna look like a toddler drew them. Oh! Right? It's what pretty. What color is this? Pink. No. That's that is pink, pink yeah. Right. By the way, I'm gonna spray every one of these with my Britney Fantasy perfume. <gasps> and so it's gonna be like Elle Do you Woods. have it? Yeah, I have it oh on my, my purse. God. Can I smell it? I also Perfect. have googly eyes. Because I thought we could make everybody a monster oh, for this Halloween. this is actually really nice. Okay. Whoever gets this pumpkin that I'm going to make, I'm going to cram it down into a tiny envelope. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like if anyone gets one of these, let us, like, slide into our DMs and let us know that you got it. Can I borrow the glue? Yeah. <laughs> I'm put on my Google Take eye. this glue away from me. That's my monster I drew. Oh, how cute! Oh. It's got, like, a little lizard. Oh, that's a great pumpkin. Isn't it? I'm like, <laughs> I'm very happy with this drunk pumpkin. And now I'm going to turn the time over to you, DJB. Oh. Okay. To educate us about baptisms for the dead people. So, I have so many questions. So first, 
I think it's probably helpful if I just we just quickly refresh what normal baptism is. Yeah. So normal baptism for Mormons happens when you're eight years old mm-hmm. or when you convert, if you convert older. Right. And you got to be submerged entirely. Yeah, you're completely immersed in the water. Do and the male members of your family do it. Often. It just mm-hmm. has to be someone who holds the ironic priesthood, which as of right now, when we're recording this, is going to be have to be a biological male. Okay. Um, and so they, they stand you up like this, and they hold your wrist and your back, and they say, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then you put your fingers to your nose and they dunk you under the water. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, all of you have to go under the water. Yeah. And then when you come back up, then then you're good. You're baptized. You're baptized. You're You're good to go. So that's how normal baptism is. Yeah. Baptisms for the dead. So in the Bible, because Mormons still use the Bible, in the book of John, you know, they have Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Yeah, yeah. So in John, chapter 3, verse 5, the King mm-hmm. James Version reads, Jesus answered, uh, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that means, according to the Bible, if you're not baptized, you can't go to heaven. And mm-hmm. Mormons have well, a Well, that's sol- why Catholics baptize babies. Right. So Mormons have a solution to this if you're not baptized before you die, which is baptisms for the dead. And basically what it means is that if you die without being baptized, either you didn't get the opportunity, you never heard about Mormons, mm-hmm. or you heard about Mormons, but you chose not to get baptized because you didn't understand how important it was to be Mormon, or... You were baptized, but not with, without the proper authority. So, like, if you were baptized in a different church. So, if you die without getting baptized, you can't go to heaven. But the good news is that God is good. Yeah. And he, he has a I, I feel like you're delaying in telling me if an actual body is present when you're baptized. Because right now it sounds like you die, and then other people decide that you're going to be baptized Mormon without your consent. And as we've cheered earlier, we're all about consent on this podcast. We are all about consent on so this like, podcast. So, like, is a dead body present during these baptisms? No. Instead, it's baptism by proxy. Oh. So what happens is a living, a living member of the church mm-hmm. who is, who, so they, they, they have to be worthy and they have to be at least 12 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, they can be baptized as a proxy, like a stand-in. For a person who's dead. But let, so you can baptize literally anybody. Theoretically, yes. You and know what would be crazy? It happens in the temple. Yeah. Do you Which remember? Which we saw. Do you we remember visited. That? We yeah. have that audio. Yes. From when we visited Temple Square and we saw a diorama of the temple. And Dude. the first thing you pointed out was, what the hell is that in the basement? Yes, with the oxen. So question. we put a pin in it. Guess what? That day is today. Yes! So we've a, come to unpin. I have a, I have a question first. Yes. Just before. Yes. Um, so it's on oxen, right? Isn't yeah. like a golden bull, like something in the Bible that like people are worshiping and then God like came down because they're like, they're not supposed to be worshiping like a false idol. So, so why are they using golden bulls? <gasps> so, well, let me show you guys a picture. <laughs> She's right. Oh, so these bulls are white. So there's these ones. And then... This is the so that's in the Nauvoo so temple. So most most baptismal pools in temples. All of them. All baptismal pools and temples are are on the backs of twelve oxen. On the backs of twelve oxen. Here's the one. This is the salt picture of the one in the Salt Lake Temple. This one looks like that Willy looks, Wonka's factory. It looks expensive. It does look <laughs> expensive. Thank you. Yes. So baptisms for the dead. They happen in the temple. Mm-hmm. Um. So this is our first episode where we start to delve into what happens inside of Mormon temples. Yes. And the first thing you do in a Mormon temple yeah. is baptisms for the dead. You can start doing them as early as 12 years old. Oh. And you do temple trips. So you'll like all the youth will get together and jump in a bunch of minivans and caravan to the temple and you'll all go in and do baptisms for the dead together. At 12? Uh-huh. Now here's the thing. 
This is mentioned in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians... Fifth chapter. Corinthians is like, love is fair, love is patient, <laughs> love is kind, in first, baptize dead people. In 1 Corinthians 15, chapter 15, <laughs> verse 29, King James Version reads, quote, Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead? If the dead rise not at all, why are they then baptized for the dead? End quote. So Mormons are like, yeah, see, this happened back in Bible times. It's just been restored when Joseph Smith came and restored Jesus' church. So when you do a baptism for the dead, um, this is how it works. So you yeah. go to the temple, yeah. and you go in the temple, and you are either already wearing temple clothes or you change into temple clothes. When you're a youth, when you're like a 12 or a 14-year-old, there's these white jumpsuits, and you go and you wait in line, and they give you your jumpsuit, and you go in these locker rooms, and you change into them. And then you all go and you, into the baptismal font room, and you sit on a bench. You're all like in a row, and then one by one you go, and they have these little cards. There's blue ones and pink ones. The blue ones are for the boys and the pink ones are for the girls. So I was a boy. Uh -huh. So I would go and they would have like five or 10 of these blue cards. And I would walk down into the water where there was an adult man waiting there. And he would sort of take me in like the baptism position, which is where they're standing up and they hold your arm in front of your nose so you can pinch your nose and they have a hand on your back to support you. And they do the same prayer with a little addition. So they say, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptize you for and in behalf of someone's name who is dead in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And then they dunk you down. Okay, and I don't so, mean to be offensive right now, but this is the cultiest thing I've ever so, heard. So they do it. And the, f the thing is, the person who's standing in the thing, either the, there's, there's another person who has the cards who's, like, sitting and watching. They're, like, mm -hmm. witnessing the baptism. And either they will say the name, like, they'll fill in the blank for you. Or sometimes they have, like, a TV screen with, like, a little camera. So they slide the card into view and it, like, highlights the name. So they just read the name off of there. Uh -huh. And they'll just, like, rattle through these. So, like, you'll go in, they'll rattle through your five names or your ten names, and you're out of the water, and then the next person comes Is it always somebody who's, in. like, related to a Mormon? Or is it, like, are you Modern taking day, on, like... Yes, it's, it's Martin often... Martin Luther King and, like, other, like... Like We've talked a little figures. bit off the podcast about how Mormons are obsessed with genealogy. Uh -huh. Part of it is so they can find their ancestors who weren't Mormon so they can do this for them. And that's how I found out about this. <gasps> um, can I get into it? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so I went into, I figured, I found out about this because I read an article that said that someone baptized Anne Frank. <gasps> and they No fucking <laughs> way! Yeah, and um, I think Hitler, too. Mm -hmm. So it's like, so, um, which is like, I don't, so how do you... So offensive. Yes, so offensive. But, like, do you have to get, like, permission from, like, their family? Yeah, or because you Anne just, Frank's family is still around. Or do you just, like, be like, okay, there's this person in history, I'm going to make them Mormon now? So, great question. Let's go back in time a little bit. Okay. This, we love to do this on the show. Ooh. Ooh, we're back in time, back in time. It is the year 1840. Joseph Smith is still alive. He's the prophet of the church. We love him. And he... Something you should know about Joseph Smith is he had an older brother named Alvin, who he loved dearly. dearly. Mm -hmm. And Alvin... Alvin was supposed to help him find treasure, and then Alvin died. Alvin <laughs> died. And at Alvin's funeral, the minister who's, like, doing the funeral service... Yeah tells everybody that Alvin is going to hell because Alvin wasn't baptized. Whoa! Oh. Which is traumatic as fuck, right? So, Joseph Smith, right, he's like growing up, he's talking to God, this whole religion thing. That's kind of in the back of his mind. Like, oh man. Fast forward to 1840, he's the prophet, he's running this church thing, it's going real well. They're living mm -hmm. in Nauvoo, Illinois. Yeah. And he is at the funeral of one of his bodyguards because he had different bodyguards of course. when he was the prophet. He's the Nicki Minaj of 1800s. <laughs> yeah. So this guy named Seymour Brunson, mm -hmm. he's at his funeral and Joseph Smith is speaking. Mm -hmm. And he's just like going off. He's reading scriptures. He's talking about religious stuff. And he says... By the by, I know sometimes some of you are worried, like, hey, look, there's a widow lady right there. 
I know you're worried because sometimes people die before they're baptized and I'm here to tell you that there's a solution. God allows us to be baptized for people mm. who have died mm -hmm. so that they can have that ordinance mm -hmm. and be saved. Mm -hmm. And the, shortly thereafter, the Mormons went nuts. The first person to ever baptize for the dead was this woman named Jane Nyman. Mm -hmm. And she was baptized in the Mississippi River for her son who had died. Okay. Yeah. Well, I feel like that's not like I I do like. But then that seems like a nice thing to me, like to be like, hey, this is something you can do for closure, really for you, yeah, for a family member that's died. But to be like, Anne Frank should be baptized Mormon, like that's a huge well, jump. Well, so here's yeah. the thing: suddenly all of the Mormons went crazy. Yeah. Everybody's baptizing for all their ancestors. People are like looking up. Like, in looking into the genealogy and trying to find out all the ancestors they can. They're writing yeah. people and saying, hey, do you remember our ancestors? So they can baptize everybody who's dead. Baptizing, baptizing, baptizing. Yeah. M Mississippi River being full of baptisms so for the dead. Flowing. So then, but then God steps in. I think it's probably been like almost a year. And God's yeah. like, hey, by the way, probably shouldn't do this in the Mississippi River. You should do this in the temple. So they built this room in the basement of the Nauvoo Temple yeah. in Illinois. And they built according to God's design, a font, mm -hmm. which was basically 12 oxen in a circle, all facing outwards. And they're supporting this like big bowl of a font, okay. which has biblical symbolism. The 12 oxen represent the different 12 tribes of Israel holding up the molten sea, which is copied after the same thing that existed in the temple of Solomon in Jerusalem. Got it. But they didn't do baptism in that one. I think they just like, like did like washing. The 12 oxen in the Nauvoo Temple, it's mm -hmm. worth mentioning, were modeled after the prettiest cow that they could find. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what it says. In Joseph Smith's writings, he said they modeled the it. The prettiest darn cow they could find. It's true. Some bullshit. So yeah, so this is that picture. So here's a picture of that font that was built in the Nauvoo Temple. Obviously they've renovated it to include electricity. But that's that's that pretty cow. It is a pretty I cow. Just, it is a pretty cow. I just like I'm. I'm they like, said it's a very good life. Coming into it, like on this side of it, I feel like I've always tried to be the person that's like pro Mormonism, like on the side of Mormonism. But like, why would you make that? Like, it is the it is so cultish. Like that's the word. Like I can't get another word through my head. Like you're a modern religion. Like. Why, why, why make that? Why not have like a realistic thing? God, well, God told them to make that. Right, you're right, God told them. So, then they started doing baptisms for the dead in the, the temples exclusively. Okay. Uh, and they did eventually specify that you could only be baptized for someone who's the same biological sex as you, because apparently that matters. Yeah. Um, so, if you remember last week we learned about the end of the world yeah and do you remember how mormons believe that before judgment day everybody has to have an opportunity yeah to that repent means everybody has to be baptized for the dead sort of basically right so this is where it would be helpful if julia was here so julia was going to be our designated driver but yeah. she has tonsillitis <sighs> so she had to cancel so i'm just doing my best we're just doing the best that we can so there's actually been a lot of a lot of famous people get baptized because people want to do the baptisms for famous people. But like their families and themselves have no consent over this. So if this was an issue in 2002, yeah, this this woman she was an ex Mormon, but she was really still into genealogy. So she, she's doing some research, and her name was Helen Radke. Yeah. And at that time, there was a public list of all of the people who had been Mormon baptized for the uh -huh. dead. Yeah. And she goes on there and she's like, huh, this is weird. There's like a lot of people on this list who are Holocaust victims, who are Holocaust perpetrators, and or who are just like really well-known Jewish people like Anne Frank and Albert Einstein and Daniel Pearl. I don't know who Daniel Pearl Daniel, do you remember in 2002 there was that 
journalist, I think it was for the Associated Press, who uh, was who kidnapped was... by terrorists and beheaded. Yes. Was that yes. guy? Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So she sees that all that these people have been baptized, and like every what Jewish person was like, "The fuck are you doing?" Right. And made a big to do about yeah. it because you're basically like stealing someone from another religion, and it's like it's like the ultimate form of more of like missionary work where you can like take someone against their will. Yeah. Essentially, because you don't really know like if they wanted to be more. You know, be more <laughs> well, and something that I think a lot of active Mormons don't think about, especially when it concerns people of Jewish descent, is that Jewish people for thousands of years have been victims of literal genocide, mm-hmm. also cultural genocide. Mm-hmm. Like so many, so many periods of time where there'd be like forced conversions when you're alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to go in when somebody's dead, <laughs> so the Mormon church gets a lot of heat because mm-hmm. they're like, why are you baptizing Anne Frank and Hitler? Yeah. Um, Hitler keeps coming up. Hitler keeps yeah. coming up. Well, Hitler, think- Tim the Toolman Taylor. <laughs> I can kind of get it from the Mormon point of view where they're like, I want our family to be together in heaven. Yeah. But, like, what if they're already in heaven? Like, are you, like, like on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, are you ripping them out of the heaven that they're in and, like, sticking them in Mormon heaven? Ooh. Mm. So here's here's the Mormon church's response. Yeah. One, they were like, oh, sorry, our bad. And they, like... Remove. They like undid. I want to say like three hundred thousand baptisms. How do you undo a baptism? I don't know. You just it's a, it's just paperwork. I yeah. don't know. It kind of shoots a lot of it full of holes. So we'll just keep moving. Ten years later, in twenty twelve, there was another like, hey, hold on. You guys said you would stop baptizing Holocaust victims, and people are finding that you still are because they found out in two thousand twelve, Anne Frank had been baptized for the dead for the ninth time. Oh my god. And then they're like, okay, sorry, 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 sorry. And this, like, letter is sent out to every congregation in Mormondom to be read during church, where it's like, hey, you shouldn't Here's be getting... Here's the thing, though. Like, I, I disagree with that. I don't think you should be baptizing Anne Frank. But, like, as someone who works in production management, like, people do shit without you knowing. And, like, when it's brought to your attention, it's like, why did people do this dumb shit? And if you are giving the responsibility and privilege of baptizing people to 12-year-olds, like, well, the 12 I think a lot usually of 12-year-olds are, are, are going to, like, weirdly baptize Anne Frank. Anne Frank is cool. <laughs> the we read their book in the high names. school. Like, The 12-year-olds uh, don't pick the names. And okay. also, adults also do baptisms. Okay. So usually what happens is, your mom or your grandma or your aunt did Got some it. research. They find out you're doing a temple trip, so they say, oh, hey, do these names while you're there. Got it. Or they just submit the names and, like, random people do them. Got it. So it's probably not 12-year-olds getting baptized for Anne Frank. It's probably very well-intended 40-year-olds. Got it. And 40-year-old, probably 40-year-old white women. They should probably know better. I know. Oh. Also, 40-year-old white women should have known better at the last presidential election, but that's another 40-year-old point. white women. <laughs> <laughs> So, here's the deal, though. So, yeah. So, in, in 2012, the Mormon Church sends out a letter to every congregation that yeah. exists to be read during church. And the letter basically says, hey, y'all, why don't you stop doing baptisms for the dead for, quote, unquote, unauthorized groups, which includes um, Holocaust victims and perpetrators, as well as celebrities. Because if you could get baptized for the dead, you would pick, like, the coolest fucking people that you could think yeah. of. Like, who do I want to get baptized for? I don't know. Who do, who am I obsessed with? John Wayne. Dwayne The Rock Johnson. James Dean. James, I literally, Dwayne The Rock Johnson be anybody, still alive. If I could be anybody, I'd be Dwayne The Rock Johnson. You can't baptize Holocaust victims anymore. Or stop it. You can't baptize for celebrities. You can only baptize for people in your family. Yeah. And this is, like, more or less the church position for... A while, but they're just trying to like reinforce it. So the yeah, idea yeah. is, you can baptize for the dead of your personal ancestors. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to be a descendant. So, anyway, so yeah. that's that's part of the church response to this controversy. Mm-hmm. The other thing is, and this is what any active Mormon would tell you, and any of them who are listening to this podcast are screaming in their cars because I haven't said this yet. What? According to Mormon belief. If, if you're a dead person and someone is baptized on your behalf, 
you still get to choose whether or not you accept it. As a dead person? Mm-hmm. So, nice. you, so you're not automatically made Mormon. It's sort of like, hey, someone just got baptized for you. Like, do you want it or no? So it's like they gave Anne Frank nine tries. It's like a Facebook yes. poke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or like a, they were or like, a grinder hey, tap. You got, or a grinder tap. <laughs> they were like, here's this thing you might not want. So in Mormonism, you have like, you have like basic heaven you have like good heaven and then like super heaven yeah Uh and then you have like outer darkness yes and so good memory (laughs) and then in like other religions you have like heaven and hell Uh so what if mormons baptize someone that's in hell and they're like fuck yeah i'll take mormonism i want to get out of hell and but they really really deserve to be there but that's assuming that all religions are true like yeah that's if Mormon, that's the case, then that's fucked up and a cool thing to think about. Like, if all religions are true, she's absolutely right. Like, because Hitler but, got baptized. Hitler did get baptized. He got that yeah. get out of jail. But even in Mormonism, he wasn't going to get an out of darkness. No, he was going to go. He's going to go to basic like, heaven. Yeah, he was. He was basic. He, he was, was getting, pumpkin spice lattes. He was lattes. getting that cricket mobile plant. Yeah, he was getting <laughs> that cricket mobile plant. Like. You're you're right, and this is like. <sighs> Mormons yeah. would say, "Well, there is no heaven and hell because that's a that's a misunderstanding of how heaven works." Mormons would say, "Oh, well, they're in spirit paradise or spirit prison, and if they're in spirit prison, the point is to have the opportunity to repent and to join the true faith." And so they would say, "Well, if they're in hell, then." They, it, they're eternally entitled a to having a choice to, to leave This that. is like a sidebar question. Yeah. Do you ever get mad or any other Mormons get mad that like you've spent so much time and energy growing up dedicating to like being the perfect Mormon, but like all of these people in Mormon hell could like decide like, hey, you know what? I was wrong. Mormons, right? And go to heaven. So when I was eight years old. I was getting ready to get baptized, and yeah. I was thinking about it. I was like, well, if you get baptized, it washes all your sins away. Why am I doing this now? It's going to be so hard to stay perfect the rest of my life. Because as an eight-year-old, I literally thought that I was expected to be perfect without sin for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, it'll be a little hard, but I can probably I can do, do it. it. And I remember asking my mother, and I was like, do I have to get baptized now? And my mother, being like a good, reasonable woman, was like, well, no, it's up to you. She tried as much as she could to leave that consent in my hands. And I was Shout like, out to GJB's mom. Uh-huh. She doesn't listen to the show, but... We still love her. We still do. And I, of course, got baptized because I was like, well, I don't want anyone to think... I don't want them to know why I don't want to get baptized. Yeah. I don't want them, them to think that I sin. So let's just get this taken care of. But that is that is a, some, a question that some people bring up is like, well, if I can just get baptized and other things after I die by okay. a family member... Why do I need to worry about it in the, that in this life? Why can't I like hang out? That's and, true. And the the like response to that, I guess, would be that if Mormonism is true, mm-hmm. and you come to a knowledge that it is true mm-hmm. by spiritual confirmation, you're gonna want to get baptized because the true because participating in this true church is more fulfilling than whatever sins and vices you would do instead. Like getting drunk on a podcast. <laughs> so so now the very official and somewhat enforced policy is you're only supposed to be baptized for someone you know, and you're not supposed to be baptized for someone that might bring the church some negative attention, whether that's people who are victims of the Holocaust or celebrities. But guess what? What? They closed off that list. It is no longer public to see who has or hasn't been baptized for the dead. But before they close that list... People made note of some names on it. Yes. So I'm going to read for you some people who have been baptized as Mormon. Yes. Who are dead. Yes. Uh, the founding fathers of the United States. All of them. All of them. Yo, Alexander oh. Hamilton. Mm-hmm. He's a Mormon. Ben Franklin, he's a Mormon. George Washington, he's a Mormon. I did not see that. In also, the Pope John Paul II. He, oh. He's a Mormon. Oh. Christopher Columbus is a Mormon. Christopher Columbus sounds like a Mormon. Adolf Hitler, Anne Frank, we know about those. Joan of Arc, <gasps> she's Mormon. Uh, mm-hmm. Marilyn Monroe. Very Mormon. Very Mormon. Genghis Khan. Uh, 
and Joseph Stalin. Okay, here's oh. the thing. No, we've like, got to get those genociders in into heaven. It's but like, like, let's get, let's grab everyone famous and make them Mormon. Yeah. Uh, so here's another problematic one. Yeah. Um, Gautama Buddha, like Ooh. literally Buddha. Ooh. The founder of Buddhism has Ooh. been well, is Mormon now. That's okay. Not good. Um, oh, also Ann Dunham. Do you know who that is? No. That's Obama's mom. <laughs> the day after he secured the nomination. Uh huh. The day after his mom was baptized for the dead. The day after. And so the Mormon church was like, no, no, stop, stop. And they like undid it. So she's not Mormon. She's not Mormon. But someone tried. Oh, Steve Irwin. Steve Irwin's oh, Mormon no. now. Elvis Presley. Mormon. Mormon. Well, he's still alive. Mm. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> Princess Diana. Oh, my God. Oh, and Gandhi. Oh. They're just <laughs> grabbing everyone. Basically everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, were you mentioned in history? Mormon now. Yeah. I can't with the Buddha and Gandhi thing. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs> and, like, I know this is shitty to like, say. Like, no offense, but, like... Mormonism is the most capitalist, like, religion I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> like, to be like, you know what? We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. We'll take it. Like, Buddhism, ours now. Oh, I forgot to mention, Elvis Presley's been baptized at least seven times. Right. Well, he keeps coming back. <laughs> so. Are there any other questions about baptisms for the dead? Or should we move on to the best part of any Mormon lesson? Oh, I'm ready. Activity, Yes. <laughs> We're ready. So, every week on the podcast, we have an activity. Mm -hmm. And this week, our activity is called... The Dead Do Rise. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. Because it's October. It's uh -huh. Ono October, so obviously let's do something. It's almost Halloween. We're like a week-ish right. away when this episode comes out. Right. So let's do an episode about something that is not only Halloween appropriate, but also involves white appropriation Amazing. and that's right. a game about zombies yes you guys ready for this yes okay so everybody's playing okay you can each answer and then we'll keep score okay i'm excited i'm ready okay you're on it question one the term zombie originates from the folklore of which country a haiti b norway or c Malaysia. Do I have a buzzer? It's from Haiti. I was going to say Haiti, but I'll say Norway. It is Haiti. <laughs> so that's a point for Andromeda. So the, the term first appeared in like the 17th or 18th century. Um, Haiti was a French colony that I believe was originally called Saint Dominique. And they brought over slaves from Africa to work on a, on all their sugar plantations. Um, spoiler alert, this was a very brutal experience with half of the slaves dying within a couple years. Question two. Haitian slaves believed after death they would return to, um, oh, I don't know how to say this, it's, it's like French-ish, uh, Longini? or which literally means Guinea or Africa mm -hmm. um, in this like kind of special afterlife where they would live free mm -hmm. unless they did what? A. Have sex. B. Commit suicide. Or C. Escape from their slave owners. B. Commit suicide. My first uh, instinct is B, because so many religions are like, no suicide. Yeah. But I feel like that it's probably C, because it was something that was, like, inserted by the slave owners. The answer is B, commit suicide. Okay. So we're one and we're one. one and Point one. for Lauren. We're one and one. Um, if you took your own life, according to what I've read they believed. I should say all of this information is coming from an article on The Atlantic called The Tragic Forgotten History of Zombies, written by Mark Mariani. So according to that article, if you took your own life, the Haitian slaves believed you would be, quote, condemned to skulk the Hispaniola plantations for eternity 
an undead slave at once denied their own bodies and yet trapped inside them a soulless zombie Mm. yeah so question three after the Haitian Revolution of 1804, <laughs> woo, woo, the zombie myth was combined into the beliefs of what religion? A. Voodoo. B. Mormonism. Or C. Wicca. It's gonna be A. Voodoo, right? I'm gonna say C. Wicca. I don't. Neither of us think it's Mormonism. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. Oh. It's A. Voodoo. Ooh, good call. In voodoo, again, yeah. according to this article, zombies were now considered reanimated corpses um, that were used by voodoo sorcerers um, either as slaves or to carry out, quote, unquote, nefarious tasks. Yeah. So it went from being sort of this, like, horrific slavery nightmare to, well, now you are a slave as an But, like, to a, perci- yeah. to a specific person. Um, for a specific task, usually. Yeah. Final question. Wait, right, wait, what's the score? Right now it's two points Andromeda, one point Lauren. Oh, okay. And there is no tiebreaker, so if you guys tie, then you this just share the victory. The first feature-length zombie film came from Hollywood in 1932, starring Bella Lugosi as a voodoo master who transforms a young woman into a zombie. Its title was... A, Doctor Zimbabwe, B, Island of Lost Souls, or C, White Zombie. All right, I'm going to go with B. Mm, I'm going to go with A. Mm, mm, yeah, I'm going to go with B, Island of Lost Souls. Um, I'm going to go with C. I feel like A is just... it's. I feel like Dr. Zimbabwe or White... I'm going to go with White Zombie. White Zombie. Okay. If it's Dr. Dr. Zimbabwe, we both win. (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) Wait, no. Andromeda is picking C. What are you picking, Lauren? I'm picking B, Island of Lost Souls. The answer is C, White Zombie. No! (laughs) Is that because that all the actors in Bela Lugosi's time were white? Probably. For sure. It's like the movie was literally named appropriate. White Zombie. (laughs) Right. So, though, America. Island of Lost Souls <laughs> yeah, what's that? was also a movie made in 1932 and starring Bela Lugosi, but instead of being uh, zombie and voodoo appropriation, it was about um, a seductive panther woman. Oh, right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> like, she's a woman that can turn into a panther, or that she's like... She's like both. Like an older cougar woman, or... Um, to be honest, I didn't read that far in the Wikipedia. She's like a woman right. who's also a panther. Well, that means that uh, not only is Andromeda our special guest this episode, but also the winner of the activity. The winner of the activity. And that's mm. our lesson, and that's our episode this week. Well, I learned so much. That was a great lesson. I'm horrified, mortified, and intrigued. <laughs> and, and incredibly glamorous. This yes, Thank very you. true, very true. Which is a shame that this is an audio experience. <laughs> so we'll have to put up some pictures on Instagram. Yes. Um, but Lauren, thank you for another episode. No. Thank you for joining me again this week. Thank you for teaching me about that. Side note. We've learned a lot about baptism for the dead. I'm still waiting to be baptized. For the living? For the living. <laughs> baptized for myself. Um, also, Andromeda, thank you for joining our show today. Thank you for having me. I think you're probably one of our most special guests we've ever had. I agree with that. And that you will ever have. Probably. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Fair. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I don't know. We're bring, We're planning to bring in a lot of people who are famous, dead, but just by proxy. And thank you, Julia, who is supposed to be our designated driver, but decided thank that you, her Julia, own self care was more up. important. Good for her. Like, she, like what if? Like, she could have felt the pressure to show up anyway and be miserable, but instead she stayed home and took care of herself. Oh. And that's something we can all better get better at. Is yeah, practicing yeah, self-care. yeah. Loki, Haiki, I miss her. Yeah. But of course, thank you, listeners. And a special thank you to our Patreon subscribers. Thank you to our subscribers. We look forward to you getting your cards that we have drawn you tonight. Mm, some, They're special. Some 
drunk ass Halloween <laughs> monsters. <laughs> so special. With googly eyes. Uh, as always, you can find us on Instagram and Twitter at Drunk Mormon Pod. We're on Facebook.com slash Drunk Mormon Podcast. If you have questions, if you have a topic you want us to talk about, or if we got something wrong, you can email us at drunkmormonpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, right into us. We want to know. We need new topics. And if you want to be toasted on an episode of the show or get like a fun thing in the mail that we made for you while drunk, you can always join our Patreon at patreon.com slash Drunk Mormon Podcast. And Anne, where can people find more about you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at uh, It's Andromeda, uh, I T S A N N E D R O M E D A. Uh, you can catch me at um, Green Eyes and Glam, the Lurk Hyperion in Silver Lake, the first and second Sunday of every month for brunch. And you can also catch me at a uh, home restaurant for home girls every third Friday of every month. And of course, I'll try and let our podcasts know when I'm doing drag again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We've done it now twice. Anyway, so we would love to hear from you in any way, shape, or form. And you know who else would love to hear from you? Your friends or family members who don't know about our show yet. Like, you don't even have to explain it. Just You just don't like, really. Just post it on social media. You really do not need friend. their consent or their ability. Just keep Send spamming that them message, with it. And it, just like a baptism for the dead, they get to choose whether they accept it. <laughs> yes. But you, you don't know if they're going to until you try. And we'll see you all next week for our special Halloween episode that I'm very excited about. Ooh. Um, but until then, I'm David John Banks. I'm Lauren Sackwich. And I'm Andromeda. And now we bid unto all, farewell. farewell. of the most attractive cow that anybody was able to find. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>